Aloha, Hawaii. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm your friend as we journey to take your health back. We are coming to you live from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii in the Plaza Club building. I always call it the Plaza Club because that's where I always go after I'm done with the show. But it's always been an icon in downtown. Today, our topic of discussion will we'll be exploring whether or not you really are what you eat. They always say that. So I'm so excited to just talk to my guest here about that, and she's going to define more of that in a few minutes. What I would really like you to take away from today's discussion is the idea that food really is medicine. You've heard that before, that food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. So simple changes will have massive effects on your overall well-being, and that's what we're going to be talking to you about today. So today we are very honored to welcome Christy Nix, a National Marketing Director in the plant-based powders and concentrates industry. She'll be consulting with me today and fortunately you're going to be able to be privileged to this information locally in Hawaii and globally. All she wants to do is inspire healthy living around the world and She's very successful at that because she's impacting so many people with her message of health, wellness, and nutrition. So welcome for, uh, to you, my dear friend, Christy. Thank you, friend. I so appreciate you oh, bringing me in here. Yeah, I love having you. <laughs> and with your TV background and all your positive energies, I know that people of Hawaii and the world will be hearing your message. And so just tell us a little bit about Christy. Well, a little bit about me is I was born and raised in northern Michigan, and I, around college time, decided it was time to flock to a warmer place, and I got a, an email from Travel Zoo that said fly to, from Detroit to Honolulu for $400, and it was in January, so I decided that's exactly what, what I was, my, my body needed, and um, yeah, I moved here with $100 in my pocket, hoped that I would get accepted to one of the universities here, and um, made life happen. So it was an awesome wow. decision, split decision. To Excellent make. decision. I mean, but not a very difficult decision to make. Yeah. I mean, not only was it the right price, but it was the right location that they were going to, you know, you're going to be venturing into. Yes. So I'm so excited about that. So let's just get started on your first slide. I know that this is so uh, exciting for you. I just want you to tell us why is this topic so important to you? Well, because I've been on the spectrum from fast food to smart food, and it was like a cold turkey shift that you guys will hear about. But as I started to learn how important it was to eat more fruits and vegetables, I learned a statistic. There's like some statistics that just always stick with you, and mm -hmm. this one just kind of, it hit me. Um, Dr. David Katz said this may be the first generation of children to have a shorter life expectancy than their parents. Right. And the way, the direction I was going, I easily could have been that statistic mm -hmm. until a friend of mine had impacted me greatly. Um, and then I think about one other statistic. Um, you've probably heard it from Dr. Sears. Um, I know you study a lot of what he, he teaches. Yes. He says that 75% of all chronic disease is preventable. 75%. Yes. So if we have that ability to change, like I look at it as if I had a lottery ticket and I was like, here's the lottery ticket, you have a 75% chance of winning, right. you would buy the lottery ticket. Right. We need to take that same approach with our health. We mm -hmm. have such a great ability to be able to shift our habits that this can make a really big impact. Um, and I, I couldn't have done it without being around a circle of people who cared more about my health than I did at one time. And now I just want to be able to pay it forward. Wow, you know, Chrissy, that same statement, that's what's compelled me and powered me up towards this journey. I have two daughters, 33 and 29, and when I heard that, st that statement from David Katz saying that my daughter's generation is the first generation that they may outlive their children, that was so profound to me, and it hit me like a bullet. And so I was very blessed to be able to retire from the chocolate factory world at the age of 50, and now my whole focus is to save the cakeys, save the generations, and just make them wake up mm -hmm. and hear, you know, hear the message. And so well, coming on to a show like this, reaching so many more people than just you and I hanging out at the mall, talking to people, this is so profound. And we just want to thank, again, Think Tech Hawaii for being here to allow us such an opportunity. And, you know, um, Along my journey, people like Dr. David Katz, people like Dr. William Sears, they've impacted me a lot. And um, we've been really blessed because we've even met them. And so there's so many people along our journeys that we need to really align ourselves with to help us 
towards that goal, there must be many that impacted your life. I, I can't even tell you the amount of friends I've gained because of one simple change that mm -hmm. I've made along the way. And, you know, they always say you're the average of the five people that you hang out with now. Mm -hmm. And I just, I feel like I've really leveled up. <laughs> so um, it's, it's been really impactful to be around a lot of great people that have impacted my life. Kind of like these people here. Mm -hmm. um, some of you guys locally may know them. This is Monica and Dave Swanson. I know you know Monica. Yes. Yes. Um, she's one of my favorite humans on the earth. <laughs> she um, she started an awesome blog called The Grom Mom, and now it's recently transitioned to MonicaSwanson.com. She's just about to publish her second book. And this family took me in when I was in college here, mm -hmm. and they they hired me to be their nanny. And oh. I don't think they realized, they had no idea what they were getting themselves into. Um, because they didn't realize that I was a terrible eater. And mm -hmm. so Dave and Monica, um, they everything in the refrigerator was clean. Like, I don't think there was ever, like, a cookie in there. And if it was, it was super healthy. Um, Dave, before all the boys would go out surfing, um, he would open up the refrigerator and put handfuls of spinach in each of the boys' mouths before they went out to, like, fuel. I had never thought of wow. food as fuel that way before. So they've really impacted me. In fact, um, Dave is a hospitalist. He's a doctor at Palimomi, mm -hmm. and he just really understands nutrition more than most people I've ever spoken to, more than a lot of doctors, because I know that they don't always have the opportunity when they're going through med school to mm -hmm. look at how nutrition really impacts exactly. the body and focus on exactly. prevention. And no fault of the doctors. No. It's the curriculum of Absolutely. the medical schools that they don't offer as much or sometimes any nutritional classes that they should be having. Yeah. And so Dr. Swanson is an out-of-the-box doctor. He's the kind of doctors that we like to um, work with. So give him a shout out. Yes. Oh my gosh. He is just like, I mean, this man is, he's a farmer at home, you guys. Mm -hmm. Like he's He's like in their backyard. He's always pruning different fruits, pulling stuff down from the trees, fueling his. I mean, Luke, um, Luke Swanson just earned the title for um, first place for the, the surf competition here. Wow. For, so, I mean, they're like really focused in not just on, you know, preventing disease, but he I mean, the man spends hours with his patients. He works so hard to make sure everyone is really trying to make changes in their lives. And he's a pediatrician. Um, no, he's no. a hospitalist. Hospital. Oh, yeah. very yeah. good. So he works with all sorts of different people. And Monica is a personal trainer. So they're mm -hmm. just a total power couple. Wow. Um, if you ever see them on the island, please, like, say hi to them. They're, they're good humans. Yeah. You know, um, by looking at you and your husband and knowing what you both do now, I could never imagine that you had such a past. I thought you probably was just raised a vegetarian or plant strong on a farm, eating the food that your family produced for you all, and, and just enjoyed that quality of life all your days. Yeah. So how bad were you or was it for you? I mean, it was it was embarrassingly bad. <laughs> it was really bad. I mean, in the picture before, you couldn't see that I had a Coke can in my hand. It was just like a little glimpse, but like, you'd never see me with that in my hand anymore. But I mean, Patton and I were awful. We would wake up and have like Snicker bars for breakfast. And we just didn't think about how bad things could be. And my friends titled me as Mick Christie because I would go through the drive through at McDonald's. I mean, I ate what I could afford, which was total junk. That's all I ate was junk. Um, I had McDonald's twice a day, every single day. And everything else, if I did make something, it was like, I ate like a frat boy. It was macaroni and cheese, cheeseburgers, <laughs> grilled cheese, like just anything that was beige with no girl. color. I was a frat girl. <laughs> well, here in Hawaii, we call that the local diet. Okay. And you know, like I can totally relate to you because, and that's why this is so encouraging for everyone watching this because frat boy here, frat girl here, our local chick, I mean, the worst diet. We lived on fast food. It's just that it's fast food. You know, and I have a, a um, confession to make, I ran a chocolate factory of business for 20 years. I fed my factory every meal, so I fed them food. It wasn't good food. It was fast food. It was bad food. It was junk food, but it was food, and I was very proud that I was feeding my people the food that I could provide for them. So if it meant Wendy was going to Costco, I'd buy 10 Costco hot dogs and drinks and come back and I'd say lunch is here. And so I did this for 20 years and I'm very guilty of that or just indulging in the local diet. And so totally understand where you're coming yeah. from and where you're going with all this. I mean, it's like. Well, I had the, I mean, I was the receipt on the receiving end because <laughs> this is my background is film. So I was used to being behind the camera, not in front of it, which is a little 
different today, but you know, when you work on a film set, it's it's hurry up and wait, and there's a craft service there. So anytime you're on set, there's just junk food galore. It's mm -hmm. heaven for most people. You're not so, used to having yeah, that much because many they want to say thank you to you. Yeah, and so they're figuring, oh, what what malasada, what donut should yeah. I bring for the crew here? Yep. You know, and so it's different here at Think Tech Hawaii because when we walk in, we bring them kale smoothies, and we bring them fruits and vegetables. Right, gang. <laughs> I know he said yes. I hear him in my ear. Mm -hmm. So, Grizzy, it couldn't be all that bad with all your friends and with you and how you live. I mean, tell us about that. Uh, it was so bad that um, Monica Swanson actually wrote a book about, what's it titled? The, the Secret of Your Naturally Skinny Friends. There it is. Um, so I'm not the preface of the book, but I'm on page 13. <laughs> so what Monica found is that, you know, her background is... Um, she's a personal trainer. She's studied how food impacts the body. Her husband's a doctor, but most of her life she's battled this relationship with food. Mm -hmm. And I think most people can relate to that. Yeah. Um, you know, they, people, I hear people say, oh, look, I just had two cookies. I've really got to go work that off. And that was a mindset that I never could understand. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some negative thoughts that I have, and we all have those, you know, bad little drafts in our head of nasty talk. But I didn't have a bad relationship with food, and Monica didn't quite realize that. Like, I, to me, food was just regular food. So how it all started was um, Monica was going to have me take the boys for the day. I was their nanny, and she put their car seat in my car. And in the back, she found a little skimpy bikini. This is what she writes. She calls it a skimpy bikini, and there was a Dunkin' Donuts next to it. And she was like, hmm, those, those things don't add up. That's weird. Maybe random, because I look the same then as I do now. And so she's like, oh, well, that might just be a fluke. And then the next day, she found a McDonald's bag next to my bikini. And she was like, okay, she doesn't work out. She learned that I didn't work out. She thought I did. I don't work out. I mean, I do now, but I never enjoyed it. And then she's like, and now I see she noticed that at all these gatherings, I was eating junk. I was eating junk in front of her kids. like just. And, but she noticed that I was just having fun, and I wasn't ever having this bad relationship with food. So right. she couldn't figure out why I was right. naturally quote unquote skinny, mm -hmm. um, despite all of the, the frat boy ways that right. I had. Right. Um, and of course, a lot is genetics, but we really, what she dove into the book is was so much as mindset. You know, there's this, there's this pattern that we tend to get into. And for whatever reason, I didn't get into a pattern at a young age about having a belief about a certain thing, maybe mm -hmm. about food or about my body. And then you have these thoughts that create that. And then it just keeps going into like this cycle of, you know, your actions then support the beliefs. And I thankfully, whatever it was, maybe it was my mother, I don't know, but I just never had that bad relationship with food. So, um, but what I did find is, can I do a quick, a quick meditation with you? Sure. All right, close your eyes. All right. So I want you to imagine that you're in your, um, your kitchen mm -hmm. and open the refrigerator and you can feel this cold blast of air hit you, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you see this big lemon on the top of your refrigerator, yeah. reach out and grab it. And then pick it up and you're going to feel like there's these heavy, big pockets. It's a heavy lemon. Mm -hmm. Take it over to your cutting board. Mm -hmm. And you guys at home should be doing the same thing. Close your eyes and do the same thing with us. So put your lemon down on the cutting board. Mm -hmm. Grab a, a big knife and cut it in half. Now imagine that you're going to pick up one end and you're going to squeeze the lemon into your mouth. Now, did you salivate? I love lemons. Uh, okay, you can open your eyes. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm not the norm. Most people are like, I grew up eating lemons. I love lemons it's like crazy. they're apples. And you know, this is the, another fact that sticks with us. When I was growing up eating those lemons, my father would say, girl, stop eating those lemons. The acid is going to eat up the lining of your stomach. You're going to damage your body. Stop. And so I, I just kept eating them because we had a lemon tree. So I ate them like they were going out of style. So now we understand, yeah. yes, lemons are acidic, but when you put them into your body, they become alkaline. Exactly. And so I didn't know, and so like you said, maybe it was your mom who was guiding you, but all these little tricks of the trade, I innately had practiced as a young girl. Mangoes, tangerines, oranges, lemons, all from the yard, building up my body's immune system. So. And again, like yourself, I mean, you can't really see it now, but remember now, I owned a chocolate factory for 20 years. I was a skinny little girl without any health issues and no reason to say, I got to change my lifestyle because. So the whole premise for what we're doing is I'm not going to wait until the diagnosis comes. I want to work on my wellness and prevention every day from now to the day I go to heaven. And when we go to heaven, we should go there because we're owed, not because we're sick. Exactly. And so that's, uh, 
you know, the facts that I, we really want to share with others, that they can have this gift as well. Yeah, right. But we absolutely. just have to, you have to hear it one more time. So for you, what really changed for you? Oh, well, I can tell you real quick. Just let me expand on the lemon real quick, though. So you did salivate, right? Uh, slightly, because okay. I love lemons. Yes. yes. So most people do when I do that exercise. I read it from a book, and it shows that the brain doesn't know the difference between real and fake. <laughs> so when we think about when we think about our thoughts about our body, whether they're positive or negative, then you're setting yourself up for that. Mm. So that's where Monica was talking about in the book, and I think it's really important. So if people believe that they're not healthy, if they say, I'm not healthy, I am overweight, then you're going to continue to be that way. Mm -hmm. You know, the statements to yourself is really important. But right. yeah, what did change for me was well, oh, a book. Okay, oh. I'm going to ask you to hold oh. that thought oh. because this is the exciting part, the solution. All right, so we're going to take a, a short 60-second uh, break, and when we return, we're going to hear the solution to this fast food junkie turned smart foodie. All right, so aloha for now. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Cynthia Sinclair. And I'm Tim Apicella. We are hosts here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks, Thanks so, so much. much. Aloha and welcome back. Here we are with Christy Nix and she's a dear friend with a story that everyone out there can probably relate to. She being, um, <laughs> what was it? What did you call you? A junk food frat? Yeah, I was like a junk food junkie or a frat junkie, boy. That's yeah, what a I frat was. Boy, a frat boy, a frat <laughs> girl. And I'm a local tailor chick with bad eating habits. That's what we have both in common. And so from being that, I shared a little bit about my journey about from wellness to health, and she's gonna share her solution from going from fast foods to smart foods. And so when we took our break, you were going to tell us about what changed in yes. you. Yes, so what changed in me was an instant. I went cold turkey vegan because someone handed me a book called The China Study. And The China Study is a 40 year long study to show the positive impacts that plants have on the body. And what I realized, so what you guys are looking at is a picture of my family at our wedding. But what the whole time I was brought up, I thought that I was doomed with a family history of disease. You hear cancer runs in my family, high blood pressure, whatever it is that runs in your family. I just always thought I was doomed. I remember sitting at a bonfire with my aunt who was a nurse and she was telling me about this family history of disease that we have and how diabetes runs in it. it skips a generation. And I just remember thinking at seven years old, there's nothing I can do. Like, this is what I was dealt with. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, she said, well, don't eat a lot of sugar. But there was not a lot of talk about fruits and vegetables. The China study changed, changed everything for me because chapter one, I learned that we can actually fight, fight disease with a fork. Um, our DNA is not our destiny. Just because my family has a sickness and disease running through it, it's because we all eat the same. It's not, <laughs> it's not because of the genes that are, I mean, we do have those genes in our body, yes. but the food turns it on. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so, you know, you hit it right on the, on the nail, on the, the nail on the head. I had the same thought. Both my mom and dad both passed away with cancer. My mom being 100% Okinawan. And we know Okinawans have the longest life expectancies. And, um, my mom went to heaven at 64, and so exactly that. When I was 40 years old, I thought to myself, for the next 25 years, I'm going to max out on life because I've got 25 years of life. At 65, I'll be in heaven as well. So I would have mentally doomed myself. Wow. So the power of knowledge is so critical. That's why our, our voices, our messages, Christy never stopped sharing, continue to share. For somebody like me, understanding the power of fruits and vegetables changed my whole life. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm 60 years old now, and had I had my own mindset, that means I have five more years of life. 
I'm not ready to go yet. We're just starting. We're just starting. And so I'm doing everything possible not to get the C word or the D word or any of those diagnoses. I'm working on it now, today, very actively with a, with a vision of just growing old. And how would I look with all those wrinkles at 100? That's what I want to envision. Yes. Okay. And if I look up like a dried up apple, that's okay. I deserve those wrinkles. Right? You've earned them. Yeah, I've earned them all. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, going cold turkey vegan, that's a, that's a pretty big step. I mean, I'm transitioning. I say to everyone, I'm going plant strong. I go more vegetarian-like. Uh, what I practice is I never cook beef, pork, or chicken in my home. But if I do go out, and if it's there on the plate, I might have a little taste because I did love it. Yeah. I'm just walking away from it. So congratulations to you, Thank you for making the best health decision on your lifestyle by going vegan. Um, you were at one time a cinematographer, just like it is here. Yeah. Now your whole career is towards health and wellness. Did the book, The China Study, have a great influence on you that you did that? It had a huge influence on me. I, I started a blog. I bought like 20 books of The China Study and tried to pass it out to everyone that I knew and loved. No one read it. I'm sure. <laughs> um, but I wanted to make sure everybody got that message. But really what changed for me most is um, I needed to change. I needed to change people's thoughts about food because just like you lost your mom mm -hmm. in her 60s, I lost my dad unexpectedly right. to reasons that could have been prevented. Right. And um, yeah, it's uh, still not easy. You know, I lost him in 2012. And I remember getting the call that nobody wants to get. My husband and I had just celebrated our four-year anniversary. We were living in Washington State, and we were hiking Mount Rainier in August, and it was probably one of the most beautiful days. Like, you know when you have that perfect day, but you also feel like the other shoe is going to fall. I just had this feeling that something bad was going to happen, and the next day my mom called to tell me that my dad was dying. Wow. And then it went from he had six months to live to two less. So um, I made it home, and two days later we were planning a funeral. Mm -hmm. And I remember standing at the edge of his bed, um, realizing that he did that to himself. Mm -hmm. And if I kept quiet about that, I wouldn't be helping people have more time with their family. Mm -hmm. I totally understand. I mean, <clears throat> I can't imagine how that must have felt, losing to your father to something that was so preventable. I mean, I feel the same cry every day. And so that's why our voice is powered up because we don't want others to lose their family, loved ones. And now at this point in our lives, like what Dr. David Katz says, not only our elders, but we're also going to be losing more and more children. Yeah. And so that's even more devastating. And so that's why our voices have to get louder. Our mission is just more focused because of these facts. Yeah. There's no way that under our watch, we're gonna let this happen. No way. So we're gonna do everything possible. Is that right? That's right. That's Absolutely. right. And 100%. So, <laughs> I don't know how you got through all those emotions at that time, but I can still see you're greatly impacted by that, that episode in your life. And I know that you're doing everything possible to bring that, the tears to, to joy, yeah. tears of joy Absolutely. for others. Is that correct? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah we, um, that lit a fire underneath me. I mean, when you see the next slide, you can see that I basically, there. <laughs> I lived with me, my gardens. These were my babies. You know, I, I started growing them as much as possible. Um, Wendy has thankfully brought these to the island of Hawaii, but you can see in the motorcycle tra trailer back there, that was when, right after my dad died, we moved from Washington State. We drove from Washington State down to LA and then through the South to North Carolina, we spent three weeks on the road where I had a garden growing in the back of my motorcycle trailer. And we would roll it outside, have a salad. It was the healthiest fast food we could possibly have. And I had these incredible opportunities to be able to use that as a platform to talk to people about their health, to be able to tell them about how I had just lost my dad one month prior and how it had impacted me and why he had passed and how important it was to get this visual of how many fruits and vegetables we're supposed to eat a day. You know, people didn't realize that we need at a minimum seven. Mm -hmm. You know, they had no idea. Like if you hold up the size of your fist, that is how many fruits and vegetables we're supposed to have. So I'd be able to, I had it as an opportunity to have this as a platform to educate and inspire people to take these simple steps onto the next thing. Wow, you're truly building a community and you know, spreading your mission. And just growing this, the knowledge, and I mean like one little seed at a time, 
growing a whole farm of healthiness. Mm -hmm. And that's so exciting for working with you and just hearing your heart about how you're progressing with your health journey. Yeah. I'm so excited for you. Yes. Keep going, girl. Thank you. It's yes. good to do it with you. Yeah. <laughs> so on that next slide, um, let's see, what is it? It's the building of a community. A community. Yes. Yeah. That's what happened. Um, all those are my, some of my favorite people right there. Mm -hmm. um, these people are just mission driven to be able to do exactly what I'm doing, inspire health and living around the world. And so many of those spaces are, their majority are all military spouses like myself. Um, a lot of them are in different countries. And Every week, they're creating events where people can go and they can meal prep and they can create salads in a jar and help people find these really simple ways to just add more plants to their diet. Um, you know, they're doing health talks. They're just, they're going outside of their comfort zone to ask people if they're open to learning more about how they can have a healthier or, life. Or, yeah. or they could come on a show like Think Tech Hawaii and get the word out to millions. Yes. Because this is what this is a voice to the world. It's an incredible platform. I, no, I'm so excited. So now for the general public say they want to start getting their friends healthier because they hear your heart yeah. how do they start i think it starts with a conversation and in the next slide it shows some you know some language that you can use especially this is especially for children but first you have to start with why and that's my why right there my husband and my dog because i just love them so much i want to keep them both alive for as long as i possibly can and i know a lot has to do with food so knowing that emotion, a lot of times that's that's going to what's going to keep you, you know, saying no to the brownie every single night after dinner or something. So I think first it's important to find your why. And that's one of the things that I love to do most is emotionally have a conversation with people so that they can make that emotional decision and then the logical logical decision because the how comes next. Mm -hmm. But it's having that conversation, especially with kids, to let them understand, you know, when I was told you have to eat fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. I did the opposite. Right, you know, that, didn't like, work. that doesn't, it doesn't work. work. People don't like to be told right, what to do. Exactly. So let's tell them why instead. You know, so I love how it says, you know, if you eat orange plants, then it's going to help you seem better at night. Mm -hmm. You know, if you eat yellow, you know, plants, then it's going to help heal your cuts better. And what kid doesn't think about like the band aids? They're obsessed about putting band aids and checking on their wounds and stuff. So to be able to show that they can use food as a, as a, a way to help them heal and live longer, healthier, happier lives, I, I just think that's. One of the greatest gifts we can do is have those conversations. Yeah, so, you know, you're hitting so many good key points because where do I start? How do I start? What do I say? The verbiage. Yeah. You know, and so all so, so critical. But well, once they understand the importance of good food and nutrition, how do you make the transition? How do you help them make their transition in their lives? Yeah, we've just got to make it fun, colorful, and easy. And there's a slide that shows, um, I just love these little plates that if you were trying to get your children to eat more fruits and vegetables, what child would not eat that? Like, how fun are those little people <laughs> that you can decorate the plates with? But as adults, we need to be showing, we need to be at the grocery store buying everything that's colorful. And one of the great things that happens all around the island, usually on Monday nights, is a lot of my team members host these mason jar salad events. And everyone is in charge of bringing just one ingredient. Um, and it's usually like a Costco size. They wash it, they thoroughly cut it up, they put it into a container, and we all meet, set it on the table and bring our jars and mm. we fill it assembly line style. In 30 minutes, we have a week's worth of healthy salads. Yay, and that, that salad can, has the minimum it's seven. It's beautiful, and look at the colors. Yeah. So you know, food is really fuel. Yes. With that in mind, a lot of young athletes, I mean, they're working out, they're working their bodies hard, their coaches are having them have the greatest performance of their lives. But if they're not putting the right fuel into their bodies, how detrimental is that? Long term, it's detrimental. They think mm -hmm. that they've earned something. You know, I've earned the brownie after a workout, but long term, it's just going to create more bad habits. The recovery from the workouts isn't going to be good. And now we're talking about some, you know, possible sickness and disease down, down the lane. And just for competitive, you know, for the next slide, if you want to talk about being able to eat to compete, Food is going to be your fuel 100%. You know, and athletes are supposed to eat not just the minimum seven, is the 18 different fruits and vegetables. So mm -hmm. we that, want to help them level up. That's so powerful. So in your closing slide, yeah. share a little bit about what your statement is in this closing, closing slide. My statement would be, just because you're not sick doesn't mean you're healthy. Remember that. Just because we feel good now, we have no idea what can happen in our future. And mm -hmm. it is so much better to fuel our body with good fruits and vegetables so that later we can possibly recover faster or just live a life that you and I have been talking about. Amen. That's the key point right there, that key end statement. And, you know, just because we don't look sick, we don't know what the inside looks like. So we have to keep all that in mind when we're putting that next naughty food into our mouth, the next fast food. So as I always say, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Just get, look, 
uh, prepare yourself to see how beautiful this is, how much this can help us and save our lives. So, Christy, thank you so much. You're the apple of our <laughs> eyes, and you're the apple of many people's eyes because you're just inspired so many. So thank you for being here with thank us today, you. and I look forward to hearing more tidbits from your life and your journey as you proceed onwards. Likewise. All right, thank you. Aloha, everyone. Aloha.